so yeah, this presentation is called How to Discover Your, Your Perfect Client Niche. And I'll do a quick introduction to myself. Website developer is what I've done for most of my career. Um, last year, I decided to train as a coach and I now work as a freelance coach as well as supporting my um, web design clients. And my mission is to, you know, to change the creative sector from the inside out to help us all do better business to do businesses that we and build businesses that we, that we really enjoy working in. And you can find out more at maxsaunders.uk. So I'm going to frame this presentation with my own journey because I think it's important to talk about how where I've been uh, to, to how you know I've got to where I am now giving a presentation on how to do uh, a niche business. So 15 years plus as a web developer working in agencies large and small I've been self-employed as well and one of the things that uh, keeps coming up over and over again for me and for my peers and for agencies that I work for is the challenge to find clients. There's lots of clients out there, but sometimes it feels like reaching them can be really, really challenging. And over time, I realized that it was a lack of clarity that was at the root of my problems. In fact, see a cat there in the background running around two cats um a lack of clarity was at the root of my my problem so essentially i went to work every day without a real sense of purpose i was a freelancer i wanted to pay the bills i wanted to maybe make a bit of money but underlying that was no genuine why no vision nothing i was working to because of that, I had no clear audience. So I didn't know really who my audience was. I used to say I was a web developer. Um, but in this day and age, everyone needs to have a website really. And that, so that doesn't kind of narrow that down at all. And ultimately, that meant that I had no way to stand out. Lots and lots of web developers out there. And we all kind of say the same sort of stuff. So I realized that I needed to, to niche down, to narrow what it was that I was offering and who it was I was offering it to. And I chose to work with small charities. That's charities predominantly in the UK um, that have less than a million pounds of an income per year, which makes up a large bulk of the, the sector. And that would turn out to be one of the most important decisions that I've made in business and in life, really, because it changed the way that I, I run the business and it changed the way that I kind of saw myself in, in the work that I did. Um, and I hope that throughout the course of this presentation, you will kind of come around to, to seeing a, a similar sort of uh, revelation to, to what I had. So let's have a look at some stuff that freelancers often struggle with. You know, these are the kind of things that you see on forums, you hear at networking events, people kind of struggling with. Um, struggling to tell people what it is that you do. So straight off the bat, I used to tell people I was a web developer, um, but it always kind of felt like there was more, you know, more to me than that. But what that was, I didn't know. I couldn't articulate what that actually meant. So I just kind of fell back on I'm a web developer. But then so was maybe three other people in the room. You know, it was quite difficult to you know go back to that point about standing out. You often find yourself bored or frustrated by client work. So, you know, when you are uh, penning yourself into a role, a copywriter, brand designer, whatever it is, you get kind of pigeonholed into one specific remit. Um, and that can put you in a functional place uh, where you're doing kind of drudge work. You're just being told what to do. You don't feel like an equal with the client. And then that can create some tension. You often feel like your work lacks purpose. So like I said, you go to work, you make money to pay the bills, maybe you have a bit extra, but ultimately, what are you doing this for? What is the why, the purpose behind your everyday activities? Writing proposals is exhausting. So going back and forth over email with a client, clarifying these different points in your proposal, um, you scale that up to two or three proposals a month, maybe more and it can get quite a tiring process to go through. And you don't get enough clients. You keep landing low quality clients, like clients that you know, are really demanding, don't want to spend any money. I mean, they're everywhere. They're quite easy to get. And you want to get out of that. Niching can help you get out of that and improve all of these points. 
So do these points resonate with anyone? Does these sound familiar? Good. So interestingly, the number one reason that people choose to freelance, according to this uh, survey, is for freedom and flexibility. Uh, but the things that I just talked about on that last slide there, they don't sound very freeing or, or flexible. It sounds like quite a stressful way of working. Um, so there is a better way, and that is to narrow down your audience and to choose a niche. But what, what is a niche? What do I mean by niche? There are many different definitions of niche, but I've come to this definition myself, which is a community of people who share similar values. And the word values there is quite important. I'm gonna to touch on that quite a lot because this presentation is all about value-led niching. So before I dive into how to find a niche, some just quick reasons to niche. I'm, I'm sure if you're all here for this reason, you're probably quite uh, curious about niching. So I don't need to labor the point too much, but in my experience, first and foremost, marketing was easier. Um, you know, freelancers really struggle with marketing because they struggle to stand out. Well, if you imagine talking to a room of 100 people and in that room you have people in various different jobs and different sectors, creating one message that resonates with all of those people is really, really hard. But if you narrow that down to one or one person or a small group of people, creating that message to resonate becomes a heck of a lot easier. Your projects become more predictable if you niche, you've narrowed the scope. So it makes doing those projects over and over again, there's more commonality in your audience. Um, so the work generally becomes more predictable and, and less sort of chaotic. You can take on more clients if you wanted to, and you can grow more easily. So you develop systems and processes to deliver on those projects because they're more predictable. Therefore, you can bring in other freelancers or even a, grow a, a staff team if you wanted um, to take the business to the, to the next level. More word of mouth referrals. So once you service a niche community, those people network among themselves, they talk with each other, and uh, if you do a good job for one, your name will spread throughout that community, um, and that is how you can get more word of mouth referrals. And ultimately, for me, it's about future-proofing your business. So we see a lot about DIY website builders or artificial intelligence copywriting software. Um, huge marketplaces where you can buy logos for $50 and all this sort of stuff. There's a huge market now and it's changing rapidly. And all of these forces are quite disruptive to the, the little freelancer like us that need to kind of find our way. Um, if you niche down and you service a very small uh, group of people, then you build trust with them people. And that trust, that human aspect of trust will really help to give you a much stronger footing in business and future proofing for the years to come. So I believe that niching typically happens when people get tired of being a generalist. They get tired of working for anyone and everyone. So the question is, are you ready to niche down and specialize? Give me a thumbs up. Um, so I'll give you a couple of examples here. Um, I spoke to Rebecca and Tina um, when I was talking about niching. And Rebecca, she has niched down to help social media managers to in increase their prices, right? That's a very specific niche. And talking about values, because she believes that people should be fairly compensated for their services. So there are lots of social media managers out there. Some of them believe that they need to earn more. They believe they, they are worth more than that. So they want to increase their prices. So Rebecca helps those people. Tina creates content for sustainable fashion brands because she wants to redefine the standards of the fashion industry. And so she finds other people that also believe the same stuff as her. She's still copywriting, content writing, but she's, she's chosen a specific group of people that share similar values uh, to work with. So here is uh, what I've kind of come to with this, that your, your niche community, the people uh, whom you serve, sit at the intersection between your values, that's the things that you care about on a day-to-day -day basis, and your skills, that are the thing, those are the things that you can do in the world, the way that you can add value 
to other people. And at that intersection, I believe, is where you find that niche community. And that's what happened with me with the uh, nonprofit sector. So I want to tackle this one head on because market-led niching is the common sense, conventional wisdom way of approaching market, uh, uh, niching. Um, so you might say, I'm a copywriter for the healthcare sector. I've chosen the se sector based upon my niche and that is the people that I'm working with. Now, that's fair enough. You might get to that stage at some point in your career. Um, but I find that if you look for the market opportunities before you examine your own purpose and your own why, your own values, um, you risk getting bored of, that, of doing that work. It doesn't, it's not really going to fulfill you, which is why I believe we should look at values-led niching rather than market-led niching. And what this starts with is your story, the things that have happened to you in your life and the experiences that have made you who you are today. When you examine those instances, they can throw light on your values, the things that you care about. And when you know your values, that will take you to the niche community, of people who share the same values as you. And like I said, this could be a sector, but I found it's more helpful to think of it as a community because those people could be spread out across different sectors in different places. Is this all making sense so far? So what does your story say about your values? We've got the story, the values, the niche. Now I said it's about to get heavy because I'm gonna ask some questions here. Uh, you don't have to answer them right now, but there's some sort of thinking topics to go through in order to, to find those values. So when have you felt empowered? and respected. Think about times in your life when you felt empowered or respected. Uh, these are the kind of things that can motivate you and energize you and make you feel good about yourself. These are the things that you want to do more of. Conversely, when have you felt bored or disrespected? Think back to all those job roles, freelance projects you've had when it's just not, it's just not worked for you. These are the things that you want to do less of. And what are your proudest achievements? You know, if you can look at something with pride outside of the project itself, then that sheds light on a sense of purpose, something a bit deeper than the project. What frustrates or disappoints you? Now, this can indicate the kind of bigger philosophical beliefs that you have. What are the injustices in the world that annoy you? People, systems, politics, whatever that might be. And which projects would you have worked on for free? Now, particularly as freelancers, we tend to look at one project at a time. We look at the money and that can, you know, we, we do work for, for less than we should because we worry about our finances. If you were to try and remove that blockage, don't think about the, the money so much. What stuff would you spend your time doing completely free of charge? That's a really liberating way of seeing um, the things that you care about. Uh, feel free if you want to take a screen capture of this slide, if you want to go through any of these questions in your own time. I'll leave that on there just for a moment if anyone wants to do that. And the coffee is now cold. Delicious. So going through this exercise, the idea is to reveal your system of values, the things that you care about. And this is how I would do it. So I'd spider diagram it on a, on a piece of paper Let's take that first question that I asked. When have you felt empowered and respected? And here are a few things that you might look at in your own history um, to shed light on that. So when I taught my team how to use a new piece of software, you know, maybe I gave a presentation and people respected me in that moment and I felt quite good about myself. Uh, when I challenged a colleague on a decision that they'd made, you know, that was an empowering moment and I felt, I felt good. Uh, when my boss told me that I'd done a good job, you know, it felt like they really meant it. And as a result, I felt empowered and I felt respected. When I told a client they had to find more budget, you know, maybe they wanted to do the work for a thousand pounds or a thousand euros or whatever. Uh, and I told them they needed three times that. And, and I did it very confidently. and I felt very empowered as a result. When I quit my job, a few things more empowering than leaving your job. 
when I said no to a project that I didn't think was a good fit for me, it didn't feel right. So these are the few of the stories that may have happened to you in your life. And this one's quite interesting to me because uh, I've done this myself in the past. And the idea now is to work out why that happened. So this is how you can uncover one of your values, right? So I said no to a project that didn't feel right. Why was that the case? What was it about the project that I didn't like? Well, the company didn't seem to treat their staff very well. You know, I'd heard stories, people have said things, I've seen some things I didn't like and it didn't, it didn't fit very well with me. Well, what does that say about me? Why did I not choose to work with this company for that reason? If I was to articulate it, I might say, I care about the well-being of other people and I want to work with others who feel the same as me. And all of a sudden, we have a potential value, something that we care about in life, protecting and nurturing other people. Is that all making sense? Kind of. Okay, so when you go through this process and you spider diagram out all of these answers, um, you might uncover a number of values. Well, you, you will do. And they're individual to you and your experiences. So this isn't an exhaustive list, but just a few examples. So protecting and nurturing others is one that I just went through there. But you might also notice that you, uh, times when you've, you've always sort of looked for simplicity, you've looked to, to find the simplest answers, uh, maybe in projects that you've worked on or the way that you've done your own business or even stuff in your personal life, you're always looking to make things simple. Rebelling against the status quo, Maybe you're the person who always wants to change things up, who looks at the way that things have always been done and says, no, we're going we're gonna to challenge that. Being independent or working in a team, a lot of freelancers, uh, you know, they'll leave the job to work on their own and then realize they actually miss being around other people. And then they realize, oh, that's a value that I didn't even know that I had, you know, um, or maybe you love working on your own. So these are some of the values that you may uncover that like I said, it's individual to yourself. So there'll be lots of different ones, but how might you apply these values to your work? This is what we're really getting to here. So ultimately we want to connect those values to a niche community. We want to spend our time doing something in the world that satisfies those values. So let's take a look at that um, initial one, protecting and nurturing others with the value that I kind of uncovered a moment ago run after school music classes for disadvantaged children. I mean, it sounds a little bit out there, but the, the good thing about going through this process is that you'll find these ideas that you didn't even know existed. Um, if you play an instrument, for example, and you want to protect and nurture other people, maybe that is one thing that you can do in the world to support that community of people. Maybe you can use your design or marketing skills to do campaigns for anti-bullying charities. So that's a way of taking your skills and marrying it with that uh, value of protecting and nurturing other people. Deliver digital training for uh, out-of-work adults. Create a personal development platform for entrepreneurs. You know, this doesn't all have to be really altruistic stuff. This can be more commercial and entrepreneurial in itself. But, you know, you're taking your skills there and you're giving a platform to other people, protecting, nurturing others. Create digital learning materials for schools. So these are some ways that you can apply your skills and the things that you do to the value that you have. Is that all making sense? And the upshot of it is, is that when you figure out what you care about, everything else just flows. The idea here is really, you know, a lot of us, we spend our time working over here, but our values are here and there's a big gap between them. And in that gap, tension arises and we don't have a very good time. So if you can bring what you do in the world in line with those values, everything else will just flow and you'll run a more purposeful and enjoyable business as a result. So to recap, you wanna look into your story by asking those good questions. 
you want to identify those core values. Those are the things that really matter to you. And then you want to think about how those uh, skills that you have can support the values, ultimately by serving that niche community. And I think that is all from me. So I hope that made sense. Has anybody got any questions?